young Uruguay starts to school in the usual Latin American manner. Boys and girls, rich or poor, wear the same white smock and study the same subjects as in other cities of the continent. The education they are beginning is not usual. For Uruguay has made strides in education to match those in its political and social fields during the last 40 years. No country in the Americas has shown more consistent good sense in the process, and it has produced results. Uruguay has the highest degree of literacy in all Latin America. Long a haven for ambitious colonists and political refugees from many lands, Uruguay now has a population which is a well-assimilated blend of European stock. The fusion of many old cultures, Basque and Catalan, Italian, Swiss and Slav, has in Uruguay been particularly successful. In the 1,500-odd government primary schools of the country, there is additional evidence of liberalism in the fact that boys and girls study together. Private schools still segregate the sex but they are so far in the minority that they count for little in the total picture. This arithmetic problem, with its cross barred seven, might be straight out of an old European textbook. But the setting of this problem places it wholly in the new world. Montevideo's fresh air schools are for children in whose families there is a history of tuberculosis but who have not themselves contracted the disease. These are not curative institutions. There are clinics for that, but preventive ones. In the sunny gardens of an old colonial home, the children study all day and rest after lunch. schoolhouse of Uruguay is usually a small adobe structure far out on the rolling plain where children of the surrounding farms from 6 to 16 come to study in one room. In such an arrangement the success of the education received depends even more than usual upon the personality of the teacher. This particular man has sufficient sympathy to handle the job but not all rural schools here are so lucky. Not even this progressive land has been able to supply all its thinly populated hinterlands with good schools and good teachers. Getting into teachers' good graces by one device or another is a universal ambition. In Uruguay, they try it with a shiny red palm granite. Secondary schools grew out of an old dream of Jose Baje, who as president of the country started in 1903 a social revolution, the repercussions of which have not yet died down. He knew that schooling which ended in primary grades was hopelessly inadequate for the great future he wanted for Uruguay. So he began early to enlarge the secondary schools of Montevideo and to spread them into the provinces. He wanted compulsory free education for all his countrymen from kindergarten through university, for men and women, rich and poor, urban and rural populations. These students are discussing the commercial centers of the Estados Unidos, neighbors to the north whom they regard with friendliness and a healthy curiosity.
school playgrounds are unknown in Montevideo. But there is a commission of physical education to direct the youngsters toward many well-equipped public playgrounds such as this one. Like most coastal cities, Montevideo developed swimmers by the hundreds, but it provides unusually well for them. This is a municipal swimming pool where frequent sports events are attended by children and their parents. seem to have developed closer comradeship in Uruguay than in most of Latin America. For example, in this forest camp within sight of the famous string of beaches, whole families gathered to try a little of the tent life North Americans seem to like so well, and a few of the hardy sports of their own country. In a case like this, mother is no stern duenna who watches the exertions of her young from the sidelines. She simply puts on a play suit and joins the game. Grandfather deserts his accustomed dignity long enough to beat the rest of the family at that fine old bowling game called Bocher. This game has a long and honorable history among the people of the Pyrenees. The object is to place your ball nearest the small cue ball and to knock your opponent's ball out of position. Young Uruguayan has reached college age, he has acquired something of the classic poise and romanticism of the true young Latin. But the progressive tendencies of his early education follow him still. Patio replaces the campus in Latin American universities. There are no dormitories or fraternity houses, so the students gather here for gossip, study, and the political arguments for which they are famous. The University of Montevideo is a remarkably practical institution, for it was planned many years ago to turn out graduates, women as well as men, prepared to follow practical professions. University with a modern point of view finds it hard to turn from the old way. This class in logic, a subject virtually ignored by colleges in the United States today, is discussing for all the world like a student group in medieval Europe the delicate concept of good and evil. These young people love good talk and this co-ed cares terribly about finding the one right word with which to vanquish her argumentative professor. Preliminary instruction. 
construction and architecture upholds all the old conventions of training and elementary draftsmanship. But this school is so widely known for its emphasis on modern architecture that it draws students from all over South America. The atmosphere of the library is such pure renaissance that the students seem dressed out of tea. When they borrow books, they must turn in their cedulars, small passport-like identification cards which they carry throughout their school year. Later they will exchange them for civil registration cards to be carried all their lives. school, young Uruguay, goes to someone's house to dance. No campus hangouts for these youngsters. Four decades of liberalism have not removed Uruguay that far from Spanish colonial manners. The traditional chaperones are still there. These are chaperones with a difference, on such good terms with the younger people that the formerly engaged couples, whom they call novios, join them at tea. After all, the elders are only members of the family and are affectionately accepted. In this room, though each is Uruguayan born, are boys and girls whose parents originally spoke half a dozen languages other than Spanish. The families of Manuela and Marusa and Rosa have lived for many generations beside the river plate. But Vanya's parents were Russian, David's were English, Leila's were Hungarian. Now they are all Uruguayan and intensely proud of it. moment, the passion of this particular group is for the hot music of North America. Since most of them speak a little English, they have taken our movies and magazines for granted most of their lives. Young Uruguayans are true aficionados. Whatever they love, be it dancing or conversation or swing, they love with the whole heart. The novios, of course, love only each other. of youth are changeable. No one sees fit to argue with the boy who switches to a radio program, a broadcast interview with a girl they all know. From one of Montevideo's local stations is coming the story of Marisa Luciardo, a young Uruguayan whose personal record of accomplishment is enviable. She answers questions about her work as director of a school for crippled children, fasting, the first of its kind in Latin America. She is one of that little group which added another precept to Bajay's great creed, not only education for men and women, city and country, wealthy and impoverished, not only for the physically fit, but for the physically handicapped as well.
she came to the United States to learn how to educate and to exercise these children. And now she is training other young Uruguayans to expand her work. Here's one young woman who has taken full advantage of the privilege of growing up in a free and forward-looking land. Look again into the face of young Uruguay, citizens young in years of a land young in spirit. Perhaps no one of them will become a great leader in the conventional sense. Perhaps few will ever be conspicuous for any word or deed, but they were born in a free land and educated in the tradition of liberty. The future of Uruguay is in capable hands. 